Okay. Uh, before moving to order collection, which is uh, which is about this tutorial, I want to tell, uh, to go back a bit to an array and clarify some things that I haven't clarified in the previous tutorial. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, no. Yes. Now, about this section here. The reason why we use a period here is because those, and when we talk about the dynamic array list, we, what we do here is that we separate uh, file statements. So when you create dynamic arrays, it's very important not to forget to put a period after each value you want to, uh, to, to put to your dynamic array because each part here is a file statement. So this is why we use a period. We don't need a period for the last one because uh, a period is, is needed only uh, to separate a statement. So a uh, far knows which one is the first statement and knows understand which one is the last statement. So all we need is to put periods to separate the statements from uh, each other. Now let's proceed to uh, a new kind of collection, the order collection. We take the knowledge that we have already uh, uh, we have already uh, received from the array tutorial, and we're going to build on that to explain the order collection how it works. Now, to create an order collection, uh, all you have to do is create an instance order collection new. Let's do this. And to uh, the difference between an order collection and an array is that an order collection can uh, uh, grow in size. Uh, can also uh, reduce in size. Now, let's add uh, values to this collection. Now, if you see here, uh, I've used something that uh, in far it's called a cascade. I have talked about cascade, uh, we have seen cascade earlier on, but it's actually very simple to understand. In order to send uh, the same message to, this, to the same object uh, again and again, but with different arguments, or to send different kind of messages to the same object, I can use what called is a cascade. Now, here I'm using the same message, but you could use a different message and still use cascades. What cascade is doing is uh, allow me not to use the same object again and again and again. The, the object that receives the message is called the receiver. So I don't really need to put the receiver each time I send a message to it. Because the cascade, what it does is takes the same object and sends each message uh, that we put, uh, 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 I don't remember the, the name of the sign here, but it actually uh, cascades one message after the other until the final message, which we use a period. Now, what we do here is use the add message. What the add message is doing is appending at the end of the order collection a new element, a new index, and put a, a, a value inside that we specify. For example, we add hello, then we add enemy, then we add three, and then we add one. If we execute this, do it, and then we go here, inspect this, inspect it, we see that it has created an order the collection as we expected. Hello, enemy, three, one. Now, the nice thing about collections is that they come with a lot of useful uh, methods that we can use to do a lot of really cool stuff with them. An example of that is select. What select is doing is taking a, a, a collection and selects particular elements out of this collection and returns a new collection with these elements. How it is doing this? It's doing this by passing, passing a block as an argument. Now what is what this block is doing? We, we set an, a, an argument for the block. Uh, in this case, the, the argument item is going to take each value of the order collection. So each value is going to be assigned an item, but each individual value. This block is repeats again and again and again and again. So it starts with hello and it asks, is the class of hello a byte screen? Yes. So what it does is actually adds to the selection. Then it moves to the next value. Is enemy uh, a byte screen? Yes, it is. So it includes enemy as well. Then it moves to three. Is three uh, a byte screen, a class of byte screen. Remember that this is the quality that checks the type of the object, not an equality sign of value, but the type of the object. Uh, and here we send a message to the admin to find out the class. And of course, here we use a class, uh, the type of class that we want to check. So it checks is three, three 
class. The class of free is, uh, I think, a small integer, but I'm not mistaken. A small integer is not a bi-string class. So this is rejected. What about this one, the an? Again, the one is the same thing. It's a small integer, it's not a bi-string, so it's rejected. So if we print this, if we print this, we see that it returns an order collection, like the order collection we have created here, that contains only our selected anim elements. This is very useful if we want to create, uh, if we want to, you know, uh, uh, extract collections from existing collections. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, can, we could actually assign this back to the order collection. So what we could do is say that uh, order collection is assigned the result of this message here. So hello and enemy is going to be uh, the new product. Let's excuse this and this, see it in the practice. Let's do it. And now let's break order collection. And voila, now it's hello and enemy. Hello and enemy. We see it here. So this is exactly a nice way to uh, select particular elements and remove elements that we don't need. An opposite method that is actually can do the exactly same thing, but in a, in a, in a different way, is reject, which is actually is doing the opposite thing. It rejects items instead of selecting them. So what we'll do here is, uh, is going to do the same thing. Uh, but I have changed a bit the, the message here to help you think and be more flexible. So what I'm doing here is item. Again, it takes its value and assigns item to it. So it takes hello, for example. It says, what is the, the class of hello? The class of hello is a file string. Okay. At order collection at one. Now, if you remember this message, it's the message that we use for arrays. We use this message to find uh, a particular value on a particular index. Now, in this case, we look at index one. Now, if we take a look at, let's execute this so we don't create any confusion, do it again. So, if we take order collection as it is and inspect it, now we see that at the first one is hello. Now, the class of hello is a byte string. So, in, in a sense, we do the same thing that we did here. I've just done it um, uh, more differently. Uh, uh, of course, if we change the first item, the class will no longer be a byte string. So, uh, it's better to use a byte string if we want to search only for a byte string. But in this case, I only care to search uh, about the class of the first item, which in this case is a byte string. So, what it's going to do is say, it's going to say, uh, is uh, hello class a uh, the same as the class of the first item, which is a byte string? Of course it is, because hello is the first item. Uh, so it has the same class. So what it's going to do is going to reject it. It's not going to include it, as we have done with the select here. It's going to say, no, I don't want you. And we'll move to the next item. And we're going to ask the same question. Uh, the first item is a hello. It has a class byte string. This has a... Uh, this item is enemy, enemy has a class of pie string, so this is also true, so this is rejected too. So we don't include this. And it's going to move the three and one, of course, it's going to do the opposite thing, it's going to select those. So what we're going to have, if we print this, is exactly the opposite that we have early on. Earlier on we have uh, hello and enemy, now we have three and one. So this is actually a very convenient way to extract items from our order collections. Now let's move whether we want to select them or when we want to reject them. So we want to filter the kind of items that we want in a new collection, or we can put them back to uh, the variable that we use now. Uh, now, if what happens when we want to find the index of a specific item? Now, we know that we have an item that it says, hello. So where this item really is? So what we do, we can send the index of method, print this, and voila. It says that is in the first item. It is the first item. Of course, that's true. Now, let's say that we don't want the first item. We want to remove the first item. We want to remove the first index. We issue this command. Remove add and the index. Now, if you go back here, now observe that how beautiful Inspector really is. I mean, look at this. It already removed. We don't really need to reopen the Inspector. Already Inspector has updated because it references the live object and has updated and shows us how the new uh, uh, collection really is. So we see that already hello has been removed, which was the first item. Now, let's say that we want to uh, add it back. So what, what this message is doing here is adds the, the uh, hello back, but adds it first. So we put it in index one. 
So let's execute this to it. And hello is back. Now let's say that we want to uh, we don't want to add in the in the in the end of the list, and we don't want to add in the first of the list, but we want to add something between two indexes. So we want to insert a new index here. It's going to contain a new value. So let's say that we want to add the uh, the, the string world after hello. Let's execute this message add after add after. Let's do it. Now, as you see, it has added between those two indexes the new, uh, uh, the new uh, value. But of course, we can use the same method we used with array. So add two, which is the word, put word. So what it was going to do here is going to put, go in text two and replace this string with a new string. So let's do this and let's go back. And again, we see inspector updates and we have the new string. Now, let's see what happens if we try to put uh, something in an index that doesn't exist. Is the collection going to grow this? Is it going to accept this? No, it will not accept this. So, we cannot really increase the size of the order collection like this. We have to create and append new indexes. So, in, in this case, if we want to add a new uh, string a new string value that says more then we could going to do this add last add last more and do it and voila more is added at last now one of the things that we haven't actually touched with arrays is that we can have collections inside uh, other collections but first let's see how we add a group of items very quickly now I have created here a literal array we know it's a literal array because it starts with this sign here and we use spaces to separate uh, each value. I have chosen to use only strings for this one, but of course you can use numbers and booleans as we explained in the previous tutorial. Now let's do this. Add all first. Now what you have seen here is done, it has taken each value of this literal array and added it to a new index. This is more stuff. This everything you see here is a separate value. So what happens, however, if we don't want really to add its uh, value separately, but we want to add the array as a value to order collection? Can we do this? And the answer to that is yes, we can. Now let's put, let's use, you know, a method that we have used with arrays already. Uh, let's do this. Or maybe uh, first, let's uh, no, actually, let's do this. Let's do this. Now, as you can see here. What it has done, it has done to the first index, which was this. It has removed this and instead it replaced it with the array. So, as we can see here, an order collection can contain an array. But the thing is that things are much more flexible than that. We, uh, an order collection can contain an array, an array can contain an order collection. Uh, uh, another collection can contain another collection which contains another collection, etc., etc., etc. So things can contain other things, in short. And even though an array cannot grow up, it can contain an, an other collection that uh, can grow. And the reason that this happens is because in, uh, in dynamic language, not just Faro, uh, what you see is not that it access memory directly. What it does, it occupies a place in the memory. And what it does is set its references. It says to you that you know something in this first item says, go find this array in the memory because this array is on my first item. When uh, on this item, which is a string, go find a string in memory that says is. In this uh, index, go find a string that says more. So this actually called references because you tell uh, the order collection tells that where in memory we have stored the arrays and the strings that we contain as values here. And this way we can uh, use uh, arrays to contain an order collection or order collections to contain arrays. And many of those methods that we have seen here, except the ones that actually increase the size and change the size, can work with arrays. Actually, if you go here to an array, you will see it doesn't have many methods. For example, we don't we cannot find the add put method nowhere. Now, if we if we if we use 
a button here that says hierarchy is going to display us uh, where this class is inherits from. And because it inherits from all these classes, it's going to take all the methods uh, from those classes. So you can use them from, the, from an array. So even though it doesn't have an add method, if we go here, we'll see that again, we see only few methods. Let's go back to sequence. Now, if we go to sequence, then we go scroll down and we see, where is it? Uh, it's not here. At all. I see an at, 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 at. Maybe it's here. Yeah, somewhere. Else. So it's maybe I I missed it. Let's see at work at work at last. Yeah, I cannot find it right now. But you will see that there are a lot of methods that you can use. Uh, maybe it's in an object. Let's see object. You can use to uh, work with arrays that we haven't. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yes, it is part of object, that's why. Okay, so the add method we have used, an output method, we see that is part of the object. So uh, we see that there's a lot more methods to arrays that we can find uh, in, the, in the classes. And all these methods that we see appearing in these objects can be used from an array. So many of those methods, for example, if you go here and we go to sequence section, uh, it's, uh, let's find a method that is... Remove, 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 remove. One second. Yeah, remove. Remove if absent, for example, which is something that we can find also in uh, or select that we can use uh, or uh, reject. Is here reject here? Reject, reject. This is actually the method that we have used for order collection, but we can see that we can use them uh, at uh, with arrays too. So make sure that you actually take a look at uh, the methods that are available for arrays and other collections and start experimenting. I mean, the, the fun about Faro is experimenting with uh, what you have and the kind of method that you have. And if you have any questions about things, make sure that you visit Stack Overflow using the tag Faro to ask questions about particular methods or particular things, because what we teach here is the very basic stuff. So I think that's all for now. Uh, I have explained pretty much, I think, for other collections. And we're going to continue in, an, in, in another tutorial, in the next tutorial, with other kind of collections too. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.